Assalamu alaikum dear students. Today we are going to do the causes of headache as well as the transmission of thermal sensations. We have done the transmission of thermal sensations before the anterolateral spinal thalamic tract. However, today we are going to mention specific points related to the thermal sensations. Chapter 49, right in 13th edition. So let's talk about headache. In the brain, there are areas which are sensitive to pain and there are areas which are insensitive to pain. So the brain itself, brain tissue is insensitive to pain. The areas which are sensitive to pain are venous sinus around the brain, tintorium, which is the separation between cerebrum and cerebellum, the dura mater, which is at the base of the brain, blood vessels of the meninges, middle meningeal artery. These areas, when anesthesia is given in case of cranial surgeries, these areas will have to be taken care of. So these are the venous sinuses, tintorium, you can see here and here, dura mater at the base of the brain and the middle meningeal artery. The pain stimulus is above the tintorium, the pain is felt as frontal headache. When the pain stimulation is below the tintorium, it is felt as occipital headache. Frontal headache is over the area supplied by the fifth nerve and occipital headache on the area supplied by ninth and 10th cranial nerves and second cervical nerve. So when you talk about intracranial headache, there could be caused by meningitis in which there is uh, inflammation of the uh, uh, coverings of the brain, dura mater, low intracranial pressure in which the weight of the brain stretches and distorts the dura mater. It can be caused by migraine in which in migraine there is vasospasm, then ischemia and then dilatation because of the release of substances that can cause vasodilatation. Migraine is one of the important causes of intracranial headache. It's usually headache preceded by aura, which we call as prodromal symptoms. There is nausea, hallucination, and visual aura. Alcohol also causes intracranial headache because it irritates the meninges. There are also causes of extracranial headache. For example, sinusitis can lead to headache. There is eye problems, myopia, Muscle spasm because of tension. When there is tension, there is contraction of the muscles around the head, which leads to muscle spasm and headache. Exposure to sun rays, irritation of the contract fiber, all these they can lead to extracranial type of headache. Regarding thermal sensations, we have talked about transmission of the temperature through the anterolateral spinal thalamic tract. We talked in details about anterolateral spinal thalamic tract. It's responsible for pain, temperature, uh, crude touch, and some other mechanical type of sensations. Now, let's talk about thermal sensations. Thermal sensations receptors, there are warmth receptors, there are cold receptors, and there are pain receptors as well involved when there are extreme degrees of temperature. For example, very cold, freezing type of cold or boiling type of hot. These receptors are subcutaneous receptors, and usually the cold receptors are much more as compared to the warmth receptors. Now, the warmth receptors are the free nerve endings and free nerve endings connected with C fibers and then they go through the anterolateral spinal thalamic tract. Cold receptors, there are two types of cold receptors. One is special branching cold receptors which transmit the signals through the A delta and the free nerve endings. The other type is the free nerve endings which transmit the signals through the C fibers. And then there are the pain receptors which are the free nerve endings and they connect through the which fibers? C fibers. Now, when we talk about temperature sensations, we talked about it when we studied adaptation and we said that temperature sensation, thermal sensations are intermediate adapting type of receptors. How they're stimulated? A little bit different from the other types of receptors. There is There will be change in the metabolic rate. Ultimately, chemical reactions inside the cells that cause the sensations or the changes, these changes are transmitted converted into signals and receptor potentials and then action potential, which is transmitted through the anterolateral spinothalamic tract. One important property of thermal sensations is spatial summation. When large area, surface area is stimulated, there is spatial summation and the sensations are felt more. There are about 12 to 25 receptors in lips. And we, if you remember somatosensory area, we say that lips, they have number one, the highest number of 
receptors and the highest number of representation in the somatosensory area. In the somatosensory, there is topographical representation of each and every part of the body. Now, the highest representation is of lips, and we mentioned at that time that it is because of the highest number of receptors. Not only thermal receptors, all the receptors highest are in the lips. In the fingers, there are two to five thermal receptors, and there are less than one in the trunk, not much. Now, how transmission? We talked about transmission previously. Let's revise it with focus on the differences. So we talked about that uh, temperature sensation is transmitted through the antenatal spinal thalamic tract. First order neuron is in the dorsal root ganglion. Second order neuron is in the dorsal horn of spinal cord. And in case of thermal sensation, it is in the laminae one, two, and three. Then there is decussation at the level of spinal, uh, spinal cord through the anterior commercial, and then the fibers, thermal sensations, they are transmitted through the anterolateral spinal thalamic tract. While ascending, some fibers do synapse in the reticular formation of the brainstem, and then it reaches to the third order neuron in the thalamus ventroposterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus. From there to the somatosensory area. Uh, now, if you remember, if there is removal of the somatosensory area, will there be perception of thermal sensation? Yes, there will be perception of the thermal sensation because the reticular formation of the brain stem, the thalamus, they play, a, they play a very important role in perception of thermal sensation. So still it will persist. Yes, localization of thermal sensation will be affected because somatosensory area, if it is affected, if it is uh, injured, if there is hemorrhage or infarction or removed. So it will lead to there is loss of the ability to localize the thermal sensations. However, the thermal sensations will still be perceived. 